Good morning. Over the last few lessons, we've introduced something called the imaginary number, which is represented by a lowercase letter i, as well as how it's defined and how the higher powers of i work. Um, and you should be able to use i to take square roots of negative numbers. So today we're going to move forward in that, and we're going to talk about something called complex numbers. This is actually the first in three lessons where we're going to talk about operations with complex numbers. In math, when we talk about the word operations, generally speaking, what we mean by that is adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Uh, now, the word complex numbers might freak you out for a little bit, but I don't want you to freak out. Complex doesn't mean hard. In fact, this is one of the skills that generally students do really, really well on. Once you get your head around what we're doing, it's pretty simple and it ties in very closely to things that you already know. There are a couple of common places to make mistakes, and of course, as always, I'm going to try to point those out to you so that you can avoid them. So before we talk about what complex numbers are, let's do a quick review about with the, of the number types that we already know. So your whole life, you have been dealing with real numbers uh, up until seeing like I, okay? Every number you've dealt with is a real number. Um, and I defined real numbers as being on the number line. If you can locate the number on the number line somewhere, then it's a real number. And so if I have my number line, I'm going to put zero a little bit off to the left there. Zero is on the number line. Zero is a real number. Um, negative numbers are on the number line. You can go find negative one. Of course, your positive numbers are on the number line. And also, numbers in between those numbers are on the number line. So for example, one half would be on the number line. It's between zero and one, so that's a real number. So your fractions are real numbers. Your decimals are real numbers. So if I find a 2.2, um, that is on the number line. Now, also included in the real numbers are the irrational numbers. So numbers that actually are decimals that never end and never uh, repeat are also on the number line. So for example, pi while I might not be able to actually put my pen or pencil directly on the point, I know that pi is approximately equal to 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. It's somewhere between three and four. So somewhere between three and four, we can locate the number pi. So as soon as we start talking about imaginary numbers, um, now we're talking about numbers that are not on the number line. Okay, and so you can go as far to the right or as far to the left as you want, but you're not going to come across I. Um, sometimes students start to think that I is equal to negative one. It is not. I squared is equal to negative one, but not I. I itself is not on the number line. In some math classes, you might go uh, to what we call the complex plane, and you'd have a y-axis where normally your y-axis is also real numbers. They'll actually put the imaginary numbers on the y-axis, and uh, you can end up plotting complex numbers that way. Um, it's not remotely difficult, but it is a little weird. Now, last couple classes, we have introduced the imaginary numbers. And guys, so we have imaginary numbers. So we have real numbers and we have imaginary numbers. And imaginary numbers have an i in them. So i is like kind of the, the base imaginary number. But if we were to take like say the square root of negative 4, that would be 2i, which is also an imaginary number. So remember from a couple class periods ago, if you're taking the square root of negative 4, you would split that into the square root of four times the square root of negative one, and the square root of negative one is i. Pretty much when you take the square root of a negative, you're gonna end up with an i in the answer. It's the same as taking the square root of a positive, except you put an i in the answer. Now, these two come together to make what we call complex numbers. And again, I don't want anybody freaking out over the term complex numbers. They're actually really straightforward. Uh, complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part. The 
That's why they're called complex, because instead of just being real or just being imaginary, they have both parts. And the two parts are going to be added or subtracted together. Remember, subtraction just means adding the opposite. So you might define a complex number as a real number and an imaginary number added together, where the uh, imaginary number might be negative in which case it would show up as a, a subtraction. So here are some examples of complex numbers. So sometimes it's, um, actually not sometimes, a lot of times it's easier to show rather than to explain in words. So uh, examples of complex numbers would be two plus four i, where the two is the real part and the four i is the imaginary part. So we have the real part and you have the imaginary part and they're being added together and that's all a complex number is. Uh, let's look at a couple more. Uh, you could see them subtracted, so like three minus five i. Just remember that could be three plus negative five i, so you can think of it as like adding all the time. Um, and you were not restricted to integers. So for example, you could have something like negative one half plus 0.3i. Now what they all have in common though is that they have a real part, so the two, the three, or the negative one half, those are real numbers, you can find those on the number line, and then they have an imaginary part, the 4i, the negative 5i, and the 0.3i, those numbers you are not going to find on your number line because they are imaginary, they have the i part. That's all a complex number is, so you have a real and imaginary part added together. The form that imaginary numbers take is a plus b i. So typically when we're writing complex numbers, we put the real part on the left and the imaginary part on the right. And that would be how, um, if you're doing like a standardized test or something, like that's the format that you would see your answer in. When we do the division, um, which some years I cover and some years I don't cover the division of complex numbers, uh, Sometimes we'll, we will leave the number in a different form other than a plus bi, and it's just purely for convenience um, that we won't actually split it up like that. But when we get to that, I'll show you both ways. So today we're going to cover adding and subtracting complex numbers. It's really simple. So follow along with this, and I don't see you having any issues with it at all. So let's talk about adding. That's like the simplest thing to do with pretty much anything. Um, when you add complex numbers, all you do is you combine the real parts, okay? Or since you're adding them, I guess combining, you'd be like you add the, add the real parts and you combine the imaginary parts. Really all it is is the uh, combining like terms. So you combine real numbers with other real numbers and you combine the numbers that have i's with other numbers that have the i's. It is that simple. So I've got two quick examples to show you and then we'll pause the video so that you guys can do a couple of practice. First example is this. Uh, we're gonna do two plus three i plus four minus six i. Now I want you to notice something about how this is written. Um, we do tend to put the complex numbers in parentheses and all that does is it visually sets the numbers apart from each other. Uh, those parentheses actually do not perform any algebraic function at all. All they're doing is visually separating the first complex number, two plus three i, from the second complex number, which is four minus six i, and then the operator is in between. Please make sure that you notice what the operator is. Um, the most common mistake, and it drives me crazy because I have to take points off for this, and it, it just drives me crazy, um, that students make when operating with complex numbers is they see the parentheses and automatically assume that it's multiplication because that's what you're used to seeing the two parentheses with. So please, 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 I'm actually gonna erase that. We're gonna put it in in a different color. Okay, to really highlight this is addition, you need to look for the operator. And adding is gonna be way easier than multiplying anyway, so don't take an easy operation and replace it with a hard operation. Because these parentheses don't actually do anything, we can remove them. So we can say two plus three i plus four minus six i, and all we're going to do is combine like terms. So I have two 
plus four, you look at your real numbers. Two plus four is six. And then we look at the imaginary numbers. 3i minus 6i is negative 3i. You could write that as um, minus 3i or you could do plus negative 3i. Either way would be fine. And that's it. You really don't even need to do this step here where I removed the parentheses. Just be a little bit careful because when we get to subtraction, you do want to do the middle step. So um, I will typically model that for you anyway, even though it's not really a step that you need to show. Uh, let's take a look at another example. We have negative 1 plus 2i plus 5 plus 7i. Again, the parentheses here are not serving an algebraic function. They are just simply visually separating the two complex numbers from each other so that you don't have this string of, of just terms there. But they don't serve an algebraic function, so we can get rid of them as soon as we're ready to add. Negative 1 plus 2i plus 5 plus 7i, and then we combine the things that are the same. So negative 1 plus 5 is Four, and then 2i plus 7i is 9i. That is it. It is simple combining like terms. You're going to add the real numbers together and add the imaginary numbers together. So let's just get a little bit of practice so that you can get comfortable uh, seeing the notation. You don't make a big deal like uh, out of it. Um, the practice is really just to get comfortable with the notation, comfortable with seeing that i there. And we're going to do 7 plus 4i plus negative 5 minus 2i. And then the other practice problem is 4 minus 10i uh, plus 1 plus 8i. And we will pause the video at this point and just give you about a minute or so to think through those problems and work them out in your notebook. Okay, now when we're doing this in class, um, I might just talk about them in the live video, but because I know some people do watch the videos after the fact to kind of make up or redo the lesson, um, I do want to make sure I give you the answers in the video as well and not just live in class. So um, this first one should be uh, 2 plus 2i is what you should have gotten, and this one should be 5 minus 2i. <clears throat> and you really don't need to show any work for that. Like I'm kind of coughing. I was eating um, white chocolate sugar cookie M&Ms, which are really good. Um, if you like white chocolate and sugar cookies, just going to recommend that, but <clears throat> they're kind of stuck in my throat. So <laughs> we have uh, four, uh, four plus one is five and negative 10 plus eight is negative two. And that's your imaginary part. All right. So now let's go on to subtraction. So we are going to do uh, subtracting. Second easiest thing to do, um, and it's exactly the same as adding, um, just because subtracting just means adding the opposite anyway. Uh, you're going to combine the real parts and then combine the imaginary parts. There's only one caution, and this won't surprise you, is be sure to distribute the negative, which is your subtraction sign. So make sure you distribute that subtraction sign um, through the other parentheses. So that middle step that I said you didn't need to do, uh, this step right here where we remove the parentheses. When you're adding, you don't really need to do it. But when you're subtracting, you do want to do it because you're very, very prone. And by you, I mean all of us, not just you as students. Like We're all prone to making sign errors there. So let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, first example is 3 plus 5i, so there's the first complex number, minus 5 plus 2i. And again, we have the, the parentheses to separate the two complex numbers. Note the operator. I'm going to do the same thing I did in the adding one, is I'm going to redo the operator in a different color. Make sure that you're paying attention to what the operator is. Just because you see two parentheses does not mean you are multiplying. So uh, subtracting is way easier and way faster than doing the multiplying part. So if you can do subtraction, do subtraction. 
when uh, we go to remove the parentheses, the parentheses here are not cosmetic um, because this subtraction means you're subtracting the entire complex number. So when we remove the parentheses, this will become minus 5, and then we will have minus 2i. And now you can go ahead and combine them. So we've got, what do we have here? Uh, 3 minus 5, which is negative 2, and then 5i minus 2i, which is positive 3i. Second um, example problem, negative 4 minus 2i minus negative 7 plus 3i. So this one's a little bit trickier. You can just tell because there's a lot of minus signs in it. But math is consistent. The rules don't change. Same things that worked for, um, yeah, worked for polynomials and quadratics is going to work for complex numbers as well. Uh, so your subtraction here is going with the entire number. So we're going to do minus negative 7, which will become plus 7, and then minus 3i. First uh, complex number is fine. We just remove the parentheses. Minus a negative, well, it means to add the opposite, and the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7. And then minus 3i, and then we combine our like terms. So negative 4 plus 7 is 3, and negative 2i minus 3i is negative 5i. Don't make them harder than they are, but for your subtraction ones, you probably do want to show that middle step. I know that you... Like a lot of you could do it in your head, but it's so easy to write the middle step that it's just not worth making the mistake. It's just not worth it. This is a really easy step to do. So on the next slide, we'll do some practice with the subtraction. And again, you know, just getting comfortable with it. This is the first time that you've seen complex numbers. So, um... You know, take, take some time to get comfortable with it. Uh, first one is 6 minus 2i minus 4 plus 4i. And the next one is 4 plus 2i minus 1 plus 6i. And uh, at this point, we're going to pause the video. I actually might stop the video uh, because we'll go over these together. But if you are watching for personal review, I am going to go through the solutions to these in the video so that you'll have those solutions. Okay, so when you're working these out, make sure you distribute that negative. That is the only you know, major issue we need to talk about. Uh, 6 minus 4 is 2, and negative 2i minus 4i is negative 6i. Uh, over here, we have 4 plus 2i minus 1 minus 6i. 4 minus 1 is 3, and 2i minus 6i is negative 4i. So your answer should be 2i minus 6i and 3i uh, 3 minus 4i. And that wraps up our first lesson on operations with complex numbers.